opportunity and pray that the words of my mouth um, are your words, that they are to be, uh, be glorifying to you and help our hearts and minds to be open to the words that you would like us to do. <coughs> Have you ever found yourself so sure of something and so unsure at the same time? I recently renovated my kitchen and was so excited to get rid of the old 60s wallpaper and update it into the 21st century King Safe Kitchen. My excitement quickly turned into uncertainty when the details of the project required a little more decision making than what I was prepared for. Maybe you have had that same experience, or at least something similar. As many of you know, this past summer I had the amazing opportunity to join a mission team heading to Kenya, Africa. With a, with a ministry called Fishers of Men Ministries, whose administrative office is housed in the center. Just before going, I was blessed to share my testimony and the call that God placed on my heart to go ye into the world, as instructed in today's scripture. I shared that the Holy Spirit filled me with the nudges needed to proclaim, I want to go. As my friend and co-worker shared about the upcoming mission, she was asked to go on. I shared about God's perfect timing and, and paving the way, and I shared how sure-footed and excited I was that in a few short weeks, I would be loading the plane for the longest flight I had ever taken to serve the people in West and East Kenya. You see, it was so easy for me to be sure of God's command to go when things seemed to line up just right. But my sure-footed, easy-to-travel easy travel pace path turned a little bumpy when my friend and co-worker, Penny Hellenberger, was no longer able to go due to a serious illness. I was able to be so sure about going because Penny had been on this trip before and knew most of what we would be doing, so I didn't really need to worry about the details. I would just follow her lead. When I received Penny's call that she had not been cleared to go and that she would have to stay home, I was devastated. I was devastated for the pain that I knew she was in, the grief that we were experiencing, and the uncertainty that immediately consumed me. That was when the Lord spoke to me through Penny and said, You know, Megan, I think my purpose of saying I was going on this trip was to get you to Kenya. Wow, to get me to Kenya. There was a message that God needed me to carry. I was reminded that when we are unsure, that God is good. I would love to say that those words calmed my heart and mind, and that it, all the second guesses went away. But if you were here the Sunday before I left, you would know that was not the case. I stood before you trembling and weeping as you covered me in prayer. Thank you for still believing in me. Today's scripture is also known as the Great Commission. It's like the game day speech for Christians to inspire and get us pumped up for our mission field. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say when it's easy or whenever you get around to it and with people that you know and are comfortable with. That would be nice, but it's not the case. The other reason I was devastated when Penny was no longer able to go, was that she was really the only person I knew on the trip. I was all of a sudden feeling alone and ill-equipped. But God, God is faithful, and as we read on, it states, And behold, I am with you always, to the end of the ages. God calls and equips us, and is with us always. Travel, although the day was later than expected, was long but smooth. God proved his faithfulness once again in his perfect timing. Conversations with our mission team of now three and other missionaries that we met on our flight revealed that God was very much in control and that I just needed to be completely obedient and submit to his plans. Fishers of Men Ministries is an organization that reaches out to the poor and needy in West and East Kenya. Through the establishment of schools and churches, as well as produce fields, livestock, and chicken coops. 
These establishments and projects have the ripple effect of providing education, better health and nourishment, job, housing, Christian fellowship, and discipleship training. As missionaries, we had the blessing of staying in the Fishers of Men cottages, where we were in community with the Fishers of Men staff. We were welcomed with open arms and told over and over again that we are family. The, has the hospitality was overwhelming, and that began to melt away my hesitations and fears. For me, this was an amazing reminder of the bigger picture and to the family of God. It didn't take long to settle into our roles, and I quickly gained the reputation of a kids and youth person. I even gained the award of the first trip inside joke. If Megan is getting tired, just put a kid in front of her. She'll wake right up. And as I stated earlier, there was three of us on our mission, uh, as three of us missionaries, other than the leader of our trip, Pastor Joshua. We had Cindy, who is a child sponsor to Florence, who we were celebrating her graduation and accomplishments as now the chief medical officer in the Mongo Fisher's Men Medical Center. And will also be somewhat of a medical missionary visiting the villages where the other Fishers of Men's School and churches are to provide treatment. She is a huge testimony to what opportunities child sponsorship can provide. Tom, represented the board, captured some great footage with a, a drone for the upcoming fundraisers. And by trade, Tom is an accountant. So he met with the new deacon of compliance to go through the paperwork and financial details of the ministry. And then there was me. I really didn't have much of an idea of where I was going to be filming or what exactly I was there to do. But I knew that God had called me on this trip to share his love with his people. This is where God taught me one of my favorite lessons in ministry to this day. The first school that we visited was in West Kenya. This was the Kimondo Victory Academy. The school was somewhat in the middle of nowhere and was sitting on land that Pastor Joshua informed us was nothing until the school was built. It was the theme that God built something out of nothing through the, the, fishers, uh, the vision of Fishers of Men Ministries. This was also the reality of the close to 400 students <coughs> that were given the opportunity to, to attend the school, as well as 100 orphans that were able to live there. Through child sponsorship, these kids and youth were able to go from a life of close to nothing and build their lives to be something. Several of the teachers and Fishers of Men staff were sponsored students who now have the opportunity to be something. Upon arrival, we were welcomed with singing and class presentations. Talk about building something out of nothing. The joy that filled the air from their singing and dancing as they lifted praises and thanksgiving to God for the many blessings that they had been given. After these presentations, Pastor Joshua introduced our mission team. This is Cindy, and Cindy is born and sponsored. This is Tom, and Tom serves on our ministry board. And this is Megan, and she is the children and youth person at the church where my office is. But then this next part was where God got me. And she is going to teach you and lead you to and lead us to cities. I looked around for another Megan. Because I was not prepared for this task. But all I see was a whole bunch of students, leaders, teachers, and other staff members looking at me anxiously, anticipating the words that I was going to be saying. And so was I. I had no curriculum, no equipment, and yet Jesus states in the Great Commission. Therefore, go and make disciples, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you to the very end of the age. It was then that I truly felt on a much deeper level than ever before that God was with me and was fully equipping me with his words and his instructions. I was purely a vessel that had made the decision to go. After the large group message, Time. The students were released for free time. We played games such as soccer, volleyball, jump rope, and bubbles. Some students showed off their skills in the Kimondo State Church built by Penny and Justice a handful of years ago with donated supplies and boards from this congregation. 
I also got to go around and learn some songs from the students. It was fun to share stories from my ministry here in Davenport with them through pictures and some of our kids' uh, Bible club songs. I very much underestimated the amount of craft supplies to bring, but with one small group of about 40 kids, I was able to do a craft, making tight cleaner bracelets, bending them to make a heart-shaped charm. As I placed the bracelet on each kiddo, I would put my hand on their head and state the words, Jesus loves you so very much, and so do I. Children are so precious, and as I put the last bracelet on one of the boys, he gave me a big hug and said, Jesus loves you. We then ended our time for the day by getting into a large circle that encompassed the entire fencing land around the circle to pray. I was blessed to be able to lead this prayer, but even more blessed when the Holy Spirit led us into saying the Lord's Prayer in unison. Picture this, a whole schoolyard filled with kids, youth, and adults holding hands and reciting the same words that we just did a moment ago in our prayer, the Lord's Prayer. It was amazing. My role as teacher, activity leader, and prayer warrior kept consistent throughout throughout the trip as we visited four out of the nine churches and both of the schools. When we were not with the kids, we were touring the multiple projects that Fishers of Men had established to provide self-sustainability within the villages. The churches, was, the churches have formed missional communities that tend to the mango fields, manage the water wells, care for the livestock, upkeep the chicken coop, and do all that is needed to harvest and sell, as well as provide nourishment to their community. The system that has been established through Fishers and Men Ministries is very well known, and they give all the glory to God. There was a lot of singing and dancing. I shared one of the songs as I returned uh, on the first Sunday that I was here, and the words of that song, Ami Tenda, Mema, Uhi Yesu, Mio Mana Mi, Nakupasipa. He has done wonderful things, and that's why we give him all the praise. However, there are still unreached people. People waiting to find the hope that will bring them something out of nothing. Romans 10, uh, verses 12 through 13 states, The same Lord is Lord of all, and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But in verse 14, the question is asked, How then can they call on the name who they have not believed in? And how can, how can they believe in the one they have not heard? The God we believe in is the same God for all. Our God desires a relationship with us. He desires us to put our trust in Him and call upon Him in our times of joy and times of despair. But how can anybody put their trust in something that they have not been given the opportunity to meet? As believers, it is our responsibility to introduce others to know the hope we have in Christ. Jesus is coming back someday, but not until we have had the opportunity to hear the good news. About five days into our trip, I had a defeating experience that crushed me and made me question my presence in Kenya. Since we were, we were still in Western Kenya at the cottages, we had some access to a hotspot, and I, I was able to call home to Penny. I was at a lot of what to do and a loss of how to continue on. God spoke through Penny once again to remind me that he has called me to this trip for a purpose. She said, Megan, you have to remember that, uh, that you are in Kenya to learn something to bring back to your mission field here in Davenport. There were seven more days to go, and seven more days that God needed me to be fully present, to learn, to experience, and to bring back to share with you. I was needed to teach, to lead activities, to make kids smile, to pray with those in physical and mental distress, learn from the teachers and leaders in the schools and churches, and encourage the parents attending the schools with their kids. I would like to believe that God filled me up to be a beacon of hope, shining his love to those who needed to see and feel it. As a missionary with Fishers of Men Ministries, I was strongly, it was strongly suggested that I foster a child. So, 
I would like to introduce you to Mercy Lavinia Mutini. It or step by it to and become one. The day I started, I started sponsoring Mercy was the day she got to start school. Mercy is a confident little girl who is going to accomplish big things. I know that for most of you, a mission trip to Africa is not necessarily reality, but maybe sponsoring a child or even a teacher is. At Fisher's and Men's Schools, these kids and adults get to get an education, learn about Christian living, eat, have a shelter, get clean water, and have a future. By supporting Fishers of Men Ministries, you support a movement from building something from nothing. You give the opportunity for people to hear so they can believe. You share Christ with the vulnerable population. There is an insert in your bulletin today that shares with you the ways to support. And don't worry. Uh, the bullet or the, the insert is upside down on purpose <laughs> so that there's a, a piece that you can tear off and won't lose the other information on it. And in a few moments, Penny is going to be coming up to give you this mission, this month's mission, moment for mission report, which expands on some of the opportunities listed on that insert. But before she does, I would like to share with you one more story. Hebrews 11 1 states, now faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being certain of what we do not see. I went to Kenya, sure that God was going to, to use me. But I was unsure of what that all what all that meant. Taking a step of faith into serving God with my whole heart gave me confidence to keep moving, learning, and growing closer to Him, even when I could not see. I was standing with a group of girls watching some of the boys in Kimondo skate church. I could tell that they were staring at me and even wanting to touch my white skin and my blonde hair. After a little time of wondering what to say, I turned and said to one of the young ladies, You are beautiful. She said thank you. And in my humanness, I started nitpicking my thoughts out loud to them. Her response to me was, We love you just the way that you are. I was sure that God called me to the mission field, but my faith wavered when I could not see. God still used me and still loved me just the way that I am. We are called to share Jesus with a vulnerable population. About a week ago, I was sitting in my office when one of our friends at the center came over with me. I heard a conversation between the two of them in which he was stating that he had done too many things, that God couldn't love him, and that he was very uncomfortable with even being inside the church. <coughs> he was sharing some really hard things about his life and the reasons for his choices, in which Penny responded with, God still loves you and will always love you. That none of us are perfect, but that we have the hope because of Jesus, who was the perfect sacrifice that we can have freedom in him. God loves us just the way that we are. And, and, and desires us to believe in him. He desires us to go and make disciples. He wants all the nations to have the opportunity to believe and proclaim their faith. He wants us to be sure in him, even when we do not see, because he is calling us and equipping us in every step of the journey. This is the call of the Great Commission. <laughs> 